Last Sunday, we gathered inside for our service, our first and hopefully only rain out of the summer. We were glad to be together again after the lakefront service at, with the Ovenston churches the previous Sunday. Our mood was also somber. We were shaken and saddened by the news of the shooting at a Trump rally the previous day. After the service, a group of us gathered in the lounge to watch a video of presiding Bishop Michael Curry's pilgrimage to Ghana. The video is part of Sacred Ground, a curriculum on race developed by the National Episcopal Church. The part of the video with Michael Curry is short, just seven minutes, but it is packed with images and reflections. We saw Bishop Curry standing by a window, looking out at the Atlantic Ocean. The space where he was standing once served as an Anglican chapel. Below it, dungeons, holding the slaves who would be loaded onto ships bound for North America. As a facilitator for Sacred Ground, I have seen the video a number of times. Each time, some statement, some image, some insight catches my attention and stays with me. This time it was Bishop Curry's emphasis on those who survived. The conditions on the slave ships were brutal. Many of the enslaved people died. But Michael Curry did not focus on them. Instead, he talked about the ones who survived, the ones who made it. They endured the hardships of slavery. Still, they managed to thrive. They held on to their traditions, their customs, their stories, their music. They had children who in turn had children, the beginning of generations of African American people in this country. Perseverance and hope in hard times, a legacy of his ancestors that Bishop Curry affirmed and honored. Perseverance and hope in hard times, that is what stayed with me. After watching the video, the group first shared their reactions, what stood out for us, what stimulated thought and reflection. We also shared our personal experiences of race. We talked about how important it is to continue learning and expanding our awareness of the many aspects of racism, to change our outlook and our actions. The Michael Curry video is just one part of a longer, <clears throat> a longer video. There are two other segments, one focused on an African-American priest, the other on a white bishop from the South. We hope to show those videos with an opportunity for more conversation in the coming months. The week between last Sunday and today has been, well, what? What words do we have for it? Rocky? tumultuous, crazy, unsettling. Those come to mind for me. The storms that drove us inside for worship last Sunday were just a beginning. What followed were more nights of severe weather. Thunder, lightning, strong winds, and warning signs all around, sirens all around us. The ongoing news about the shooting at the Trump rally, the grief and the fear, the search for a motive, the finger pointed of blame for lapses in security. Then the events of the Republican National Convention in Milwaukee. And in the midst of it, the news that President Biden had tested positive for COVID. A reminder that COVID has not gone away. It is still active among us. Finally, Thursday night into Friday, the computer snafu that interrupted air travel systems in banks, hospitals, and other sectors. So much happening, so much news. It's hard to pay attention to it, and hard not to. In the turmoil of this past week, I found myself returning again and again to the memory of last Sunday, to the Michael Curry video and our conversation about race. I wanted something to hold on to, to steady me on the shaky ground of national events. What did I turn to? What did I hold on to? The theme of perseverance and hope, and the experience of a small part of this St. A's community 
engaged in discussion about an important social issue. Perseverance and hope, how essential they are to our lives, how deeply embedded they are in our human nature. We see it in today's gospel lesson. Jesus and the disciples have been hard at work in their ministry, teaching and healing. They have given people hope. Now they're tired and hungry. Jesus tells them to head off in a boat to a quiet place where they can rest, but they do not find it. People see them and hurry off to gather around them when they arrive. When Jesus gets there, he sees the people waiting for him. He does not brush them aside because it is late and he's tired. He sees them as sheep without a shepherd. He has compassion for them. He begins to teach them. Then we jump ahead to the next day and beyond. The story repeats itself again and again. More crowds, people bringing their sick and laying them out in the marketplaces, begging to be healed. Now, when the text uses the word sick, I think we can understand this literally. That is, people have physical ailments. I think sick and the need for healing also have broader meanings. Sick is whatever prevents people from being whole, from leading the kind of lives they want. They come to Jesus because of his teaching, his compassion, his touch. They are restored to health and wholeness. Some will return to their families and their work. Others will join up with Jesus and his disciples. They will become disciples themselves. They will help to carry the work forward. Presiding Bishop Michael Curry retires at the end of October. He will no longer be in the spotlight. He will be missed. But we have his legacy. We have his teachings. His insistence that God is love, and the ministry of all of us is to share that love. We remember what we have heard him say over and over again in the last nine years. If it's not about love, it's not about God. Love is central. Love is key. Love is stronger than hate, stronger than greed, stronger than injustice. If we were to ask Michael Curry for some parting words of advice, I imagine he would say something like this. Listen to Jesus. Do what he tells you. Love one another. Treat each other with kindness. Work for equity and justice. Be like Jesus. Jesus tells us that we are all children of God, every single one of us, whatever our race, our history, our status. Have compassion and respect for everyone. Jesus embodied love and hope. You should too. Jesus persevered. He didn't quit when things got rough. He kept going. He showed up. Do the same. We've made it through a rough week. Let's hope the week ahead is quieter, smoother for all of us and for our nation. Whatever the week brings, we will continue to do the work of discipleship. We will love one another. We will embody hope. We will persevere. One final thing. In a minute or so, after some quiet for reflection, we'll join together in affirming our faith. The affirmation of faith we are using this summer is different from the Nicene Creed we're used to. As you, as you say the words, I ask you to pay attention to them. Let them speak to you. Draw strength from them for the work God wants us to do. This is the affirmation of faith. We believe in God the Creator, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Creator, Savior, and Holy Spirit. 
Amen.